Neopod T. Now providing active humidification for neonatal transport. Now, WestMed has introduced the Neopod T, the first equipment available to provide heated and humidified gases to the neonate on transport. Using active humidification, the Neopod T is designed to provide 100% humidity at 37 degrees centigrade for all gases given on transport of the neonatal patient. With the use of the Neopod T, the standard of care requiring all gases given to premature infants be heated and humidified can now be met in the transport environment as well as the NICU. Providing heated and humidified gas to neonatal patients helps ensure that proper thermal regulation of the premature infant is maintained on transport. Heated and humidified gas at 37 degrees centigrade and 100% humidity also helps reduce and prevent dehydration of the infant's lungs, which can result in airway obstruction, atelectasis, and hypoxemia in the course of neonatal transport. The Neopod T is very compact, lightweight, and requires only 12 volts power when in use. The Neopod T circuit is also disposable after each single patient use, which reduces infection risk for the premature infant. A premature infant on transport may require intubation. The Neopod T can provide heated and humidified gas delivery to the intubated patient. In addition, the use of high-flow nasal cannula, which has come into widespread use in recent years in the NICU, is also an available mode of therapy for transport of neonatal patients requiring high-flow therapy with the Neopod T. The Neopod T has a special high-flow circuit with high-flow nasal cannula for delivering heated and humidified gas at up to 10 liter flow per minute. Whatever the modality of gas delivery required for the neonate, Neopod T can provide heated and humidified gases for that patient, intubated and high-flow, all now available for neonatal transport with Neopod T. Neopod T Hardware and Equipment the Neopod T hardware consists of the Neopod T controller and the connecting cable assembly. The connecting cable assembly includes the lava bed sensor, the airway sensor, and the power cable. The power cable is used to connect the Neopod T controller to a 12 volt power source, which provides power to the Neopod T and the lava bed. The lava bed cartridge is the disposable humidifier and heater of the Neopod T system. Enclosed in the cartridge are a heater element, a water wicking system, and a water level control system. The lava bed cartridge is mounted on a plate attached to the mattress bracket. Operating the control unit of the Neopod T. The Neopod T control unit has an on-off switch which turns the power on or off to both the Neopod T and the lava bed cartridge. The temperature control knob sets the temperature of gas required at the lava bed outlet port. The airway temperature button, when pushed and held, displays the airway sensor probe status. When released, the control unit will continue to display the lava bed outlet status. The alarm silence button will silence the audible alarm for 90 seconds. There are several LED lights on the face of the controller. Beneath the on-off switch is illuminated green whenever power is being applied to the heater in the lava bed cartridge. There are three LED lights in the center of the controller. The LED on the left is illuminated yellow whenever the monitored temperature of the lava bed or airway is 1.5 degrees centigrade or more below the temperature set on the temperature control. The LED light in the center is illuminated green when the monitored temperature of the lava bed or airway is within 1.5 degrees centigrade of the temperature set on the temperature control.
The LED light on the right is illuminated yellow when the monitored temperature of the lava bed or airway is 1.5 degrees centigrade or more above the temperature set on the temperature control. There are two safety alarms on the Neopod T controller. Any alarm that sounds will give both a visual indication and an audible alarm. The audible alarm can be silenced for 90 seconds by pressing the alarm silence button. However, the alarm LED will remain illuminated as long as the alarm condition exists. Any alarm will disable the heater in the lava bed cartridge until the alarm condition is cleared. The probe sensor alarm. This alarm indicates that the lava bed cartridge sensor has failed. 40 degrees centigrade alarm. This alarm indicates that either the lava bed sensor, or if in use, the airway sensor, has detected temperatures at or above 40 degrees centigrade. Setting up the Neopod T controller and cable. Connecting to the power supply and Neopod T controller. A 12 volt power cable with two ring terminals can be connected to a 12 volt DC power source. Normally, this would be connected to the transport incubator internal battery. Next, attach the power cable connector to the Neopod T control unit. Setting up the lava bed chamber and circuit. The lava bed chamber has several connections to be made. The lava bed probe connection. The inlet port from the ventilator. The outlet port to the patient the water reservoir, and the water feed inlet for adding water. Install the lava bed sensor probe into the lava bed cartridge. This is a tight fit, and the probe should be pushed in until an audible click is heard and or felt. Next, attach the lure slip end of the water feed tubing to the water inlet port. Fill the syringe provided with sterile water. Room temperature water is recommended. Attach the syringe with water to the water feed tubing and infuse 20 milliliters of water into the lava bed cartridge. Do this slowly. Leave the syringe attached to the tubing for use later if a water refill is needed. This 20 milliliters of water will supply the needs of the lava bed cartridge for 1 to 1.5 hours. Add more water as needed using the tubing and syringe setup. If too much water is supplied to the lava bed cartridge, the cartridge incorporates a safety drain and excess water will drip out of the bottom of the cartridge. Attaching the intubated circuit to lava bed. Attach the inspiratory limb from the ventilator to the inlet port of the lava bed. Next, Connect the patient inspiratory limb to the lava bed. The end with the Y adapter connects to the patient. Connect the temperature sensor probe to the patient Y. This is the cable with the white tipped probe. Connect this probe to the temperature monitoring port of the circuit at the patient airway. Attaching the high flow circuit to the lava bed for high flow therapy with nasal cannula. Attach the oxygen supply tubing limb from the oxygen source to the inlet port of the lava bed. Connect the patient inspiratory limb with pop-off valve to the lava bed. Attach the desired size of WestMed Comfort Soft Plus High Flow Nasal Cannula to the patient end of the circuit. Connect the temperature sensor probe to the temperature probe port. This is the white cable with white tipped probe. Connect this probe to the temperature monitoring port of the circuit proximal to the nasal cannula connection. If nitric oxide sampling is required, attach the nitric oxide sample probe to the NO port with the blue cap proximal to the nasal cannula connection. Setting the operating temperature on the Neopod controller. After the setup is complete and the lava bed cartridge is in place inside the incubator, Turn the on-off switch on the controller to the on position. The LED light will show green for the on position. Set the vent flow to the desired level during warm-up. 
To prevent the formation of condensate, set the lava bed temperature to the same temperature as the incubator. The LED lights in the center of the controller will now provide information on temperature. At first, the LED light on the left will glow yellow while the lava bed is coming up to set temperature. When the lava bed cartridge is providing heated and humidified gas to the set temperature, the LED light in the center of the three lights will turn green. At this point, the green light below the on-off knob will glow green and blink slowly, on and off. The humidifier is now providing heated gas and appropriate humidification of the gas at the selected temperature on the Neopod T controller. When using the Neopod T, it is important to remember, do not use a water feed set during transport. Motion or conditions that are not level can cause the lava bed cartridge water level float to malfunction. If additional water is required during transport, supply only with a syringe. To prevent excess water from entering the patient airway, the lava bed cartridge incorporates a safety drain. If an excessive amount of water is supplied to the lava bed cartridge, the safety drain opens and drains excess water out the bottom of the cartridge. When filling the lava bed cartridge initially, do not infuse more than 20 milliliters of water into the cartridge on setup. Do not put the controller in water or other liquid, as this may cause damage. Disconnect from power prior to cleaning controller or cables. Do not operate the controller if damaged. Do not use in the presence of flammable anesthetic agents. <laughs>